Welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the haunted attraction and haunted entertainment community. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And we wish you a happy mon- happy Sunday if you're joining us live, a happy Monday if you're getting it as this comes out in the recorded version, and a happy whatever the hell day of the week is you're listening to us as you get to choose that. This is your right and your privilege as a listener to Haunt Weekly is you get to choose when you listen to it. We yeah. offer so many choices, <laughs> unlimited choices literally with the recorded version and the YouTube version. But we thank you for joining us. We thank you for agreeing to spend the hour with us as we're getting ready to talk about Something that I'm going to admit is pretty heavy. Yeah. This is not going to be a happy one. If you were in the mood for a happy-go-lucky podcast, you needed a break from 2020 awfulness, I understand. Might want to stop now and come back at it when you got the spoons or whatever to deal with it. Yeah. I understand. But it's the, 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 the reason I say that and I warn that is because, look, I'm going to be blunt. We're not in a good place right now. Right. As far as haunting goes. Yeah. And we're going to talk about why. We're going to talk about what we're seeing. And what's got us so discouraged. And honestly, one of the things we're going to try to do is we're going to, you know, some of you have said that listening to us has helped perk your Halloween spirits up sometimes. We've heard some feedback like that before. No. I'm hoping that it works both ways. No. That's what I'm kind of hoping for here. It's why I dragged all this equipment out and (laughs) agreed to do this. In spite of not really feeling like it. So we'll talk about that today. But anyways, if you want to check up on the happier episodes, take take a ride over to hauntweekly.com. Go back to the 2019 episode. Yes. (laughs) Anything from 2019, other than the cancellation one we had in 2019, any other episode in 2019, or 20, 2018's completely safe. You can do anything in 2018. (laughs) We've got a lot of episodes. Uh Uh-huh. And most of them aren't very time sensitive, so have fun. Go to hauntweekly.com, check out the episodes there. You can also find us Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash hauntweekly. All of those episodes, including the 2018 ones, which we just didn't <laughs> say, are there um, for easy access and wonderful. Listen, we've got playlists there too to help you if you just want to catch the news episodes or the interviews. Mm-hmm. We've got those there. So, yeah, it's great stuff. At, YouTube.com slash Haunt Weekly. But as always, you can find us at Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts. Spotify, um, Podbean, Pod of Magic, whatever. I don't know. There, there's all kinds of services. I don't actually do that. I pay someone to do that for right. me. So they, they get us on all the lovely services. So I don't have to. So otherwise, it, it would be like two things, and I'd forget to upload to one you know, <laughs> every other week. you know. Because no. that's just the kind of idiot I am. But anyways, yes, we are coming at you today, this week. Um, the topic du jour is Halloween and Haunting in 2020. And and look, this is one of the weirdest episodes we recorded. Yeah. We have show notes. We have yeah. technically a plan, and technically a structure. I have no idea how long this episode is going to be. Yeah, it's probably going to be a gripe fest. We usually shoot for around f- between 50 and 60 minutes. Yeah. So I find that getting right underneath that hour is about perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I have no idea. This could be short. This could be long. I have no idea because th- th- this is not uh, structured like any episode we've done before. 253 episodes. I don't think we've done anything like this other than maybe our cancellation episode from last year. Yeah. That may be the closest, but even then. Okay. So first things first, before we get into the actual topic, to sure we have some housekeeping items to take care of first. And I... First item, I forbid, it was to announce last week's winner for the question of the week, and we've got a celebrity with us. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow, this is <laughs> this is great. Um, um, because this week's winner was Jim Warfield, the legend of Raven's Grin Inn. Yes. His answer yes. was... The, the question was... <laughs> the question was, what is your favorite lighting oh. tip or trick? Yeah, and we were trying to... Focusing on outdoor lighting, so we're doing a yard display, we're being selfish, and Jim said... A uh, bright red light behind a low wall where nobody could, where nobody could hide. Uh, customers walk up, and I would stand close and right behind, and be right in their face. Yeah, basically, so basically using the light to provide the shadow for him to hide. Yeah, as in. I understood it, having a light kind of projecting up like a steak light mm-hmm. with a low shield and the shadow part underneath the light. Right. 
and then lay down or get down in there and then spring up in front of the light. Yeah. And that is something I've got to say, having been to Raven's Grin Inn, Jim is really good at messing with verticality. He is. That, yeah. that, that, he's amazingly good at that. Like, weirdly good at it. Yeah. Uncomfortably good at it. He's had a lot of practice. He's had a lot of practice. He's been so, doing it a while, but he's very, yeah. very good at it. And that's one of his great gifts is, is playing with verticality more than I know we do. Right. And more than a lot of haunts do. So it, it's, a, it's a master class in that. Yeah. But so, special yeah. thanks to him yeah. and to the others who participated both during the live stream and afterwards. Yeah. We had more comments after the show ended i think it was about equal yeah of, i think we had as many comments had. after than as we did during yeah, yeah which was nice to see so thank no, you guys thank you all for, for the great suggestions and ideas yeah i mean some neat stuff in there some really great advice in general but i had to say just picturing jim warfield springing up from that <laughs> small wall and in front of the light and scaring the but that that was just too much i had to yeah. i had to run that was it <laughs> yeah a couple Good. of people mentioned pepper's ghost yep that was a popular yeah. one and, so. and pepper's ghost is a classic one and i mm -hmm. i've only seen um it in one actual haunt where it worked as at intended yeah because it does require very careful controlling of the light and i just don't think a lot of haunts get the precision they need with it yeah but i've seen it work well online and yes yard and, haunts and i've seen it in yard haunts and i've seen it i mean the most famous of course is disney's haunted mansion i've seen it work flawlessly there well they have the musketeers <laughs> the mask <laughs> yes um <laughs> but so yeah no but uh, that was a good suggestion there was a lot of great ideas there i mean I, it, was, it was really yeah. good so go back through the chat maybe we should start sharing some of the other ideas too rather than just the winning one I, that's something we can do okay. I, I really enjoyed this episodes. we had a lot of, of great conversation on this one um and that did help pick up my spirits a little bit and speaking of picking up spirits yes the question of the week uh, for, uh, question for the week for the uh, question for the audience question of the week I forget what we call it god damn we go back and forth of Crystal week, yeah. take it away <laughs> for those of you who are not haunting this year how are you keeping your spirits up what are you doing to celebrate the season um for us it is almost entirely focusing on the yard display yeah that's the only real fun I think I've had this season so far has been building that with you and making that work and managing right. to actually construct most of a yard display without getting shocked. Yeah. Um, I haven't been electrocuted yet. Exactly. You, you're missing that. I know. I haven't. I, I, <laughs> though I, I, I jinxed it. Yeah. Knock on. This is real wood, right? Yeah, no, knock on wood. There. <laughs> knock on the wood because we still haven't set up the second half of it. Right. But I set up the half. I was sure I was going to shock myself on. Right. And we haven't set up the second half because we're waiting. For well, we'll we'll talk more about that yeah. in a minute. There's still more electrics to be run, electricity to be run. So there's still plenty of opportunities. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have said that yet, but I managed to wire the most complicated part. Right. By far, without injuring myself, which is impressive because every year I usually get at least a good buzz. Yeah. <laughs> In addition to that, you know, yeah. this year I'm also doing small paintings and making yeah. small gifts to send to people. And some of those go to winners of these they do. question of the week. So uh, speaking of which, Jim, uh, we don't need your address. I think the whole haunt industry has your address. Yeah. So we'll, e we'll, mail, we'll email it. We'll mail it there. <laughs> That'd be impressive. Get it to you. We'll email physical objects somehow. Hope you have a 3D printer. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. No, we'll mail you that. Um after season, it'll be November when those go out because we're doing monthly batches. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what are you doing to keep your spirits up? You're painting, or designing, and building a fun new light display, right? And I'm I'm actually having a lot of fun with this yard display, and it, it's a, it's a pity what else we're going to have to be discussing in a little bit. I, I'm I'm deeply upset by the the news we got today. Mm. Oh man. Anyways, so we don't actually have any actual housekeeping notes that I am aware of. No. Usually this is where we go, okay, this is all the things we're changing and fucking around with this week. <laughs> Let us know if it works. Let us know good. if it works. Thanks, bye. And, and yeah. this, we have an actual section of the show notes where we talk about that exact issue. And I don't think we have anything. We're using all the exact same stuff. We decided we liked the, the streaming presentation and setup. It seemed to work well enough. Um, we seem to have the audio issue mostly fixed yeah. that we had. It was reported the audio was muddled. That doesn't seem to be a problem. Looking at the levels on the audio, and it looks good. 
Let me know how it sounds and, and land. Everyone seems to be able to understand us, though. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I think we got a good setup now, and I'm happy with it. And other than it requires a little more work in the pre-setup, it seems good. It doesn't overtax my computer. I get to read the chat, um, which is nice. That was one of the big problems was that the old setup, my entire computer was dedicated to not burning itself at the stake trying <laughs> to get the video out for you guys. Right. Like, it, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's sitting there going, it's odd. It's burning up in here, and so I, I couldn't even have, like, the browser open. I had to have text version of the show notes and things like that. With this, I actually get to use my browser, and I get to join chat, which is nice. So I get to see, like, we got uh, Pete uh, joining us in chat, and um, Chris, Gay. I, Chris Gay joining us, and, of course, we mentioned your entire family yeah. um, is <laughs> here, <laughs> which is good. Uh, so, yeah, um... Yeah, so now the, the the tone has to turn. I held off as long as I could. I got us to the 11-minute mark. Come on. That's pretty good. Um, But yeah, like I said in the very, very intro, this is going to be a bit of a downer episode. We have been... We're sorry about that, but we've been feeling down. And right. I, I, I can't... I, you know, this is just all honesty and transparency here. We don't want to come out here and do a happy episode and not have our hearts into it and tank a happy episode. Yeah, we it's sound just, much happier than we are. <laughs> well, I'm putting on my podcast face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I did, and it's funny because I've been literally so morose all day. I've been wanting to sleep all day. Yeah. And it's just hilarious that I come in here after literally doing nothing all day because it's all I could muster the energy to do. Mm-hmm. And then that recording goes like, hey, it's Jonathan. It's like, whoa, that was Way easier than it should have been. Oh, well, you know, you, you saved up all the positive for now. And I also do that with Bernie and my characters, too. So maybe yeah. the podcast Jonathan's a character, and it's looking at it that way. Um, we are very happy with how our display is coming. We're going to do more on that later. We're going to end with a talk about what we are doing. Yeah. Because I want to have a good, long conversation about that. Just something to keep things a little happy. Mm-hmm. I, I like sending the crowd home happy. Right. Um, so I'm going to try to do that. Um. But yeah, recent events, both personally for us and in the news, have really hurt us and have really dampened our spirits. And I'm finding that for the... And so we were canceled last year yeah. due to road work, and that angered me to no end. I was mad. Mm-hmm. I spent the entire month of October mad. Yeah. I was always... I mean, I, I basically, I was always on edge of chewing someone out yeah. for the entire month of October. And I try not to direct it at Crystal and Ellie and others I love, but I mean, I, I could tell that if, you know, a, a little kid came up and annoyed me, he was going to get punted in the next month. <laughs> it was just keep me away from humanity for the duration of the month is the safest thing for everyone. Right. Please, sir, can I have some boot? <laughs> nope. You annoyed me, Oliver Twist. You annoyed me, Mr. Twist. Um, no. But yeah, this year the feeling is very different. We obviously we've can't made the decision to cancel, and I'm finding that it's not that I'm angry, I'm not mad. I'm finding that my enthusiasm for Halloween and haunting is dwindling. Yeah. yeah and I, I would agree with that. And that hurts. That that hurts way worse than being mad at the city about a road project gone awry. I mean, that road project was supposed to be done in fucking spring, and yeah. it went on to spring the next year. Right. And, yeah, they finished it right before COVID. Yeah, well, they finished it literally just in time uh, for COVID. Yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they literally finished it in March. I think you know the road is surviving as well as it is because people aren't driving as much. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it may well be. Jeez, Louise. So yeah, so yeah, I, I was mad about that, but I never lost my enthusiasm for haunting. Right. We went to as many haunts as we could. We did that trip to Houston. We're well, apparently, according to Houston fans, we went to every one of the wrong haunted houses. Um, <laughs> pretty much. Mm-hmm. Great time to criticize us after the trip. That's very useful, guys. We asked for suggestions before in multiple places, and we did the ones we got. Just saying. Um, but no, we um, we we never lost our enthusiasm. We never lost our spirit. And we were able to have the haunt open for HauntCon, had both a tour right. come through, and we had uh, many of our friends come through as we actually opened it with actors. Mm-hmm. Had a great time. Yeah. Uh, that was wonderful, so I did not lose my enthusiasm. Now I'm worried I am, and I really 
feel down. And and I admit, a lot of times in the middle of season, I'll get this way sometimes. Right. A project's not going the right way. I'm angry. I'm bitter. I'm morose. I'm feeling stupid. Yeah. But this isn't that. No. And and it's wider spread. Yeah. It's not just what's going on with us that's bringing us down. Yeah. We're looking out into the world and it, it, it seems to be an infection, even in like the haunt groups we're in. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are talking about this moroseness. Yeah. Um, and that was one of the things. Last year, if we needed a little shot in the arm of haunt enthusiasm, we just pull up Haunter's Hangout. We just pull up one of those groups. And we see what you crazy sons of bitches are doing. And it's great. It's awesome. I mean, yeah, we can't open because we ain't got a road. But right. <laughs> but we can at least check out what you guys are doing and have that enthusiasm. And that was great. I, I did like that part. Um, but this year, yeah, the moroseness seems to not just be limited to us. Yeah. And it's like you said, it's based upon what's going on, not just locally, but in the world. Mm-hmm. And some of it's 2020 blues, I admit. Maybe that'll change as things go back to normal, when and if they go back to normal. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm struggling to find the energy to decorate, to put this podcast on, to do the things that previously I did with so much enthusiasm. I pay to do these things. Yeah. We pay to put on this podcast. Right. We pay to put on the light display. We pay to put on the haunt. We've spent ungodly amounts of money with no course and no intention of, yeah. re- of reclaiming it. It's it's not... That's not what we're about. It's not a business venture. It was never, plan, never planned on it. You want to pay me money, talk to me about copyright stuff or plagiarism yeah. stuff. Pay me money yeah. for that. Don't pay me money for my haunting. You know? Yeah. But anyways... For us, for me at least, and I wrote these notes from my perspective, and I know you've read them and you seem to agree with everything. No. But for me, this really seemed to peak last week. Really start in earnest last week. And one of the reasons was we did the news last week. Yeah. And one of the things we had to cover was that there were three shootings at haunted houses. (sighs) Yeah. And that was rough. It was. And it's (sighs) a conversation that I think needs to be broader yeah. in the community. I know Japes has been doing a lot to spread the, the news. Yeah. Um, the terrible, terrible news out there. Um, and started several conversations on different forums. But I don't know. Well, and okay, I, and I have to do a delicate balancing act here. Right. Because... I do not actually blame these haunts for the shooting. Well, one of them, maybe. The one that attracted a thousand people and practically had a fucking ride out their doors and didn't have any time ticketing and didn't have any basic precautions, it seems like. No. They, they, they probably they probably deserve some responsibility. It's at least some ethical responsibility. Yeah. But one thing that all the haunts had in common, but all the shootings had in common, rather, was they involved haunt queue lines. Right. And why are there queue lines in 2020? I don't know. And that's the reason that I think that the haunts do have some responsibility. Here. Yeah. That's, you know, I, I may put more blame on them than you do. That, then um, that's fine. That, that's reasonable. <laughs> you are allowed to, to yeah. have your feelings. And I know. We don't have to agree on everything. No. I, I've to. learned that's not a legal requirement. Yeah. <laughs> It's just a legal requirement that I agree with you before we go to sleep at night, so I wake up. <laughs> um, yeah. But, but no, there shouldn't be queue lines in 2020. And, you know, people shouldn't be bringing guns at all. Well, yeah, I mean, ultimately the haunt didn't do the shooting. I mean, that, that's, right. that's the end game with me, is the haunt didn't pull the trigger, no, obviously. But, but they set up a situation where a shooting could easily happen in a year in which we're not supposed to be having crowds and groups. These were all right. I mean, at all. And, and, and it it boggles the mind because basically it's a simple problem. It's a math problem. Mm -hmm. We have limited capacity because of COVID. If you're not operating with limited capacity, um, I, I, (laughs) I don't have even have words for your irresponsibility there. Right. And there's a lot of pent up interest in doing stuff. Yes. In general. 
Yes. And the hearing that haunted houses are opening, that's a stuff. That's a thing. Yeah, people, people are, are excited to be able to Even people that go. don't normally do haunts are probably very interested in doing anything. Exactly. This is an experience they can have in person. And so you combine the limited capacity with large crowds, this leads to long waits. Yes, you have limited, you might inside the haunt have limited capacity, limited exposure, and limited risk. But the thing is, if people show up and have to wait, they don't magically disappear. Right. Exactly. So if you're still selling tickets on site, yeah. even if you are doing time ticketing, somebody's going to have to wait. And they're going to have to wait somewhere. Yeah. They're going to have to wait in your queue or in their cars or outside your gate, which mm -hmm. is apparently what happened at that haunt like that had tracked like the damn near riot. Yeah. Was they were limiting people inside, and so everyone was waiting to park and outside, and the crowd was just moved further upfield. And it's like... That doesn't do any good. <laughs> right. It, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, they're not on your property, but it doesn't really matter if someone gets sick with COVID or shot because of anger over all this yeah. on your property or right outside your gate. Yeah. and it's the, They're just as sick. They're just as shot. Yeah. And I'd also say, you know, you can't trust your customers to do the right thing. No, if they have if they have a time ticket or something, yeah. and they're not feeling well, but they're not running fever, they're still going to come probably. Yeah. And, and I say that because our friend who works at a casino had to eject a guy who was vomiting blood in a bathroom, because you know that's when you want to go to the casino. Well, you know, I mean. Casinos do make me want to vomit blood. That's just yeah. a personal opinion on casinos. Not so much that I hate gambling, I just hate casinos. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're tacky, they're gaudy, they're loud, they're obnoxious, they're everything I hate in life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it's one of those things where, yeah, you can't, and there was a, I've seen, I'm not going to name who it was. Right. Even though they're a listener to this podcast, they're probably listening now, they may even be in chat. <laughs> um, I'm not going to say who it was because I don't want to call out their experience, but they shared a photo of a queue line at a haunt. Right. And and nobody was social distancing in this queue line. No. Mask usage was okay, but yeah. it's mask plus six feet. But there was yeah. no social distancing. And what frustrated me was I looked at the photo, and the haunt had gone through and spray-painted X's. Yep. Every six feet. And they did it in a neat little, like, diagonal pattern. like a, 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 Yeah. So they could fit more people in their queue line. Right. But still so keep them apart. they had lines, and, yeah. and yeah. they were... They 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 worked this out. Yeah, and the customers just were not having any of it. Yeah, yeah, and you know you can't have a staff because it was narrow lines. Yeah, so you couldn't have a staff person in there. No, to keep them apart. You know, to say hey, you need to be at your spot. Yeah, what's the what's the solution to that? Well, the solution is you can't have a queue line. Yeah, you don't have the staff to force socially distance social distancing and mask usage in the queue line. Yeah. And you can't, yeah, you just can't have a queue line. Mm -hmm. You've got to have the waiting happen somewhere safe. And I think some haunts have taken to the approach of, hey, you wait in your car. Right. We'll text you or page you or whatever. And then you come and then you'll wait in like this bullpen. It's a room to yourself, basically. Then go in. Yeah. And that would work. The problem is a lot of those haunts that have been doing the wait in your car, get a text. I've been getting reports. You just wait and get in a goddamn 45 minute queue line. Yeah, that's what we've heard from multiple people. And it's like, well, that defeats the purpose of waiting in the car. And of time ticketing. It defeats the purpose of everything. Yeah. People. I mean, do people not know their throughput? Like their actual throughput? Yeah. If, is, is that part of the problem is you don't know how long it takes for a group, uh, you know, in general to go through? After hearing and reading the reviews of some of the drive through haunts. Oh, yeah. And seeing... Like, people were bitching about, like, a two-hour wait in a car or something like that. Yeah. Well, I had to race through the haunts. I had to go pee. There were no restrooms on site and things yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. It's like, have I spent more time studying my the throughput of my home haunt than some pro haunters have spent studying theirs? Yeah. Now, the drive through haunts are not going to know their capacity because they're brand new. They're a brand new invention because of COVID. Yeah, and I, I, get, I get that to a degree. But at the same time, you think you'd estimate conservatively at least the first few weeks. Yeah, if you have a speed limit for the cars yeah. going through, which you should, and you know how long it takes each scene to play out, you should be able to, 
you know, do the math. Yeah. And figure out. How you should better get a good idea, but uh, yeah. but yeah, we have this pent up demand to do things, mm. and haunts are opening. And even though haunts are laying down great rules, at yeah. least on paper, you read the COVID pages, you read everything they're doing, they're doing it right. But the experience on site has consistently not lived up to what those rules say it is. And right. look, the issue is customers. Yeah. People are the worst part of society. Yeah. Believe me, I understand this. Exactly. People fuck everything up. Mm -hmm. But that was a foreseeable problem. Yeah. It really and truly was a foreseeable problem. It should have been pitifully obvious that people... What is the number one rule in every haunt? No running. No running, yeah. Has anybody ever followed that rule in a haunted house? Other haunters. Other haunters. Other than haunters. <laughs> has anybody followed that rule consistently? No. I mean, other haunters are like, oh, yeah, chainsaw guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just please don't burn my leg with it. Just, yeah, okay, thank you. Go after the ones that are running. I'll catch up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bye. But, but yeah, so that's the way we are. But, yeah, everyone else is, mm -hmm. That rule goes right out the window. Um, And the problem is this. Um, people are already angry. They're already upset. And we don't have the front of house staff or the ability to safely access these queue lines in order to handle these problems. Right. And we are all, and this is something, this is going to be a theme of this episode. We are always going to be judged and regulated by the worst of our community. And yep. if I side tra if I can take a sidetrack here for just a minute, do you know, uh, we've talked about this a hundred times before, but it, it bears repeating. Yeah. <laughs> do you know why your haunt has to have super duper fire alarm and sprinkler systems? That may seem to you way OTT for what you're doing. Do yeah. you want to know why your fire marshal rides your ass every year? Do you want to know we have to do all this? Six Flags Haunted Castle Fire. Yep. That's it. Six Castle, oh, six Castle, Six <laughs> Flags Haunted Castle Fire in New Jersey. Caught, it caught fire. It killed eight teenagers. Yeah. And going back and looking at what happened, what led up to it, everybody was shitty. <laughs> the design of the castle was completely inadequate. The materials used were completely incorrect. No thought was put into safety or fire safety at all. And the fire marshal in that district was beyond negligent. Yeah. I mean, I don't even, there's got to be a word <laughs> goes uh, that's past negligent. <laughs> just, just, um, it was insane. Willfully negligent. It was absolutely insane. How inept everyone was in that, and how just negligent and reckless everyone involved was. Everyone from who built, everyone from who built it, designed it, and operated. Not necessarily the actual like people letting the actors and things like that, but the operators of it mm -hmm. were just hopelessly negligent. And eight people died. The fire marshal got blamed, and now every haunt, no matter how safe, no matter how good, no matter how hard you work. You were judged, and you were legislated, and you were regulated by that fire. Yep, yeah, exactly. That's just the way it is. They were the worst actor. They were the worst in the haunt industry. Yep. And we have spent decades being regulated by their by the standard they set. <sighs> Something to think about. Yeah. Okay, the, the, so that was the first reason. And the second reason we've been getting depressed is we've been reading and observing stories about haunts defying government orders. Yep. Now, Illinois is the only state that has completely banned haunted houses. Right. And many haunts in the state appear to be open in complete defiance of order. And this includes some haunts we went to when right. we went to Chicago. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> We went to we went to these haunts. We loved these haunts. We had a great time. Right. Um, but yeah, they're opening and defines the order and just trusting that the state doesn't have the enforcement power or the enforcement reach to shut them down or the enforcement care, one of them, to it, shut them down. Yeah, and they're probably... They're probably right. I they're mean, probably right. They're probably right in their gamble. Yeah. But it doesn't make it the right thing to do. And what ha A, it doesn't make it the right thing to do, but B, what happens when the state finally does learn about this and then passes new regulations for all of the haunt industry, including the haunts that were closed? Or Yeah, statewide across Illinois. Yeah, I can you know? easily see new regulations coming down because of this statewide. Right. I mean, is going to war with your local government really that brilliant? About it? At least here in, New in, in Louisiana, you know, 
controversial it may be, at least here the haunt owners went and got lawyers and petitioned the state and got exemptions. Yeah. And were able to open legally. You know, I'm, I'm mad that the state didn't stand by their rules, not, not so much because I necessarily agree with the rules, but because once you set a rule, it should just be the goddamn rule. Yeah. You know, until you have evidence, it shouldn't be the goddamn rule. Not just because someone got a lawyer and annoyed you enough. Right. And had the money to get the lawyer yeah. to annoy you enough. That, that, that to me, doesn't work. No, it, it, it's not. So that's frustrating. But it, it's different than outright just defying the order. Yeah. And risking bringing down po- possible penalties, not just on you, but the entire industry. Right. And Japes is saying, by the way, that um, it sounds like they're trying to fight it legally. Which I, is different from some of the reports. No, I saw uh, one of the haunts, and I'll tell get with Jay, post on their Facebook page that they were open yesterday. Yeah. I know at least one haunt that, um, that we went to, one of the ones we went to, was open yesterday, Saturday. Yeah. So, and, and yeah, if they want to fight it legally, that's one thing. Do so that. So they're still opening while they're trying to fight it. So before they get a ruling. <sighs> that doesn't count no no i'm sorry that's not how this works that's not how any of this works um so yeah th- this is problematic and and i get it okay maybe closing haunted houses outright is too far yeah but after what we've seen ourselves i'm not i'm actually not thinking it's totally <laughs> wholly outrageous no and and like i said the problem with violating this order is it puts both people and the haunt community at risk and one of the things to think about is if most haunts 95 percent of the haunts do right and shut down and five percent defy the order yeah then anyone that wants to go to a haunt is going to have to go to one of those five percent of haunts and that's going to mean bigger crowds more people more bullshit at those haunts exactly and once again, we will be regulated and judged by our worst members. It's just the way it is. Yeah. It's not fair. No. It's not right. It's not anything. It's the truth. Mm-hmm. We will be judged and regulated by our worst actors because we are too small of an industry and too weird of an industry. So what people are going to do is they're going to find the worst cases and say, okay, we need to legislate for those assholes. Exactly. And even the non-assholes now have to abide by legislation written for assholes. Well, yeah, because it's it's like warning labels. Yeah. You know, somebody had to try that stupid shit at some point or it wouldn't so, be a somebody warning. Somebody had to believe the Superman cape enabled him to fly or exactly. some, some dumb. Or that we're shocked to learn planters peanuts contain nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Something like that. Some... There, somebody calls that label to be there in every yeah. case. Never forget that. And somebody calls that law and regulation to be there. It's the same thing. No. Yeah. Laws aren't written just because, you know, your congressmen, state or federal congress people, you know, legislators are going, I feel like making a new law today. Yeah. They don't want to work. No. They don't want to work. They, they don't want to work any more than we do. They are decidedly human at the end of the day. They are. So just remember that. Yeah. And then came what for us was the trip um, to Dick Kick City. And that was our trip to New Orleans Nightmare. Yeah. We bought these tickets uh, back in early September. They had a $13 mm-hmm. sale. Yeah. And we decided that we can sink 26 bucks in two tickets. And if we don't feel comfortable going or if COVID situation shifts, we can be out 26 bucks and call it a day. Yeah. We were perfectly fine with that risk. Yeah, that's that's... <clears throat> not a break the bait amount for no, us. No, So we we went down there uh, Friday. Yes. We had time ticketing for 9, 8, 9 p.m. to 9.15. Yes. And we got there and we noticed that the New Orleans Nightmare had pretty much the exact same number of cars it has when it's normally open. Yeah, there were a couple of, I would say probably 90% of the parking Yeah. was was taken up. Yeah, it was it was about normal for especially for a Friday night early season. It was fairly yeah. normal for there. We get there, there were huge crowds. Yeah. And the line was doing okay with social distancing on the back side where mm-hmm. we like where you would enter it. They were doing okay, but you could see quite clearly as you got toward the front of the line that social distancing had gone completely out the window. Yeah, and basically what happened was the the line at the back 
was for tickets being sold on site. Yeah. Well, and I, I don't remember there being a ticket booth, but you know what? It doesn't matter for a very simple reason. They were selling same day online tickets. Yeah. So if you get there and they say, oh, you have to buy your time ticket in advance, you can just whip out your cell phone and buy a ticket. Yep. That's the same as having a ticket booth. It is. It's just it's one in their pocket. Yeah, I really thought that I saw. And one, I thought, but... and I thought I did too, but I couldn't confirm it. I didn't want to say it out loud. But it doesn't really matter if they did or they didn't. They were offering same day ticket sales, and we know that because they announced their sellout for the not this past Saturday, but the one the first Saturday. They announced it like two thirds of the way through the night. Yeah. Meaning they were selling same day tickets. Exactly. It doesn't matter if it's at a ticket booth or on a phone or on a computer. If you're selling same day tickets. That's a problem because yeah. now you're going to attract crowds. <laughs> Exactly. And, and they had very large crowds. Mask enforcement was terrible. They did have a mass checkpoint on the way in. But once you got past that, all bets were off. Um, actors in the queue line area and, and the milling about area were not socially distancing. In fact, they were taking no. selfies and letting people pull off their masks to exactly. get the selfie photos. And we noticed the people leaving the haunt. Several groups came out while we were standing around. We were only right. there for like five, ten minutes or so. But came out. None of those people had masks. No. It was 0% mask usage among the people leaving the haunt. And the chainsaw guy, whoever was running them out, was literally funneling them into the crowd of people hanging around. Waiting to get in line. Waiting to get in line. Yeah. And so we took one look at this and we noped right out. <laughs> exactly. We just left. We, we we decided to lose the 26 bucks. Yeah. It wasn't It, it was not safe. I, I, I read their COVID plan. They said a lot of good words, but on the ground, it didn't pan out. It no. just flatly did not pan out. And I don't honestly know what happened. The plan sounded really good. Um, it, it sounded really good, but the execution was terrible. And part of the problem was, like, okay, we get on site. The first thing they do is they ask us if we had tickets. We said yes, and I immediately now wonder what would happen if we said no. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> I'm very curious. One of us should have said no and just yeah. lied. Um, but anyway, they we get um, they check, make sure we have masks, and of course we had masks on. They checked our temperature, which is the most useless COVID test. It is. For everything we know about this illness, that's completely useless. Then they had us pass through the dumbest metal detector I have ever been through. Yeah. Because no one was actually attending it. There was a staff member standing close. But they also had like a whole bunch of other jobs they were doing. They did. They did not yeah. have one person who was just metal detector. And what this meant was, I lost my lockpick set there. Yeah. My daily carry, about $100 worth of lockpicks, gone. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason was because they didn't have a light on the table. You're supposed to set stuff down as you pass through. So I set my stuff down and apparently I just didn't pick it back up. Um, and then I didn't realize it until I was already home. But regardless, since there was no one there at the table, I could have pulled out a bomb, like four sticks of dynamite, the sticks of dynamite <laughs> taped together with an alarm clock on it, bomb dynamite written on the side. I could just place that on the table, walk around the metal detector, picked up the bomb, and kept going. Yeah. Because no one was watching it. Not no. really. Well, no. And, you know, the tablecloth was black. There was no light. There was no light. So it and was. And my lockpick case dark. was black, so I just didn't see it. Yeah. And and they weren't using the baskets. They I think they had them, but I didn't. They did have them. They but, were not out for use. Um, I suspect that it's because they didn't want to sanitize between each one. Yeah. So instead, we're all using the same tablecloth. Yeah. I mean, there was no one actively just doing the metal detector, which if you're going to have a metal detector, that is someone's full-time job while you run the haunt, yeah. while you are open. Because if you're going to do a metal detector, I mean, I've had my rants about metal detectors in the past. Yeah. <clears throat> um, not going to repeat them, but if you're going to do it, do it right. Yeah. And the, the one thing they did get right about it was the placement, which yeah. was before you get into the actual area for the haunt. Yeah, they did do that right. I will give yeah. them that. They, they put it in the right location. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it... Uh, and... Uh, to go to a haunt and then not actually go to a haunt... Yeah. ...is a painful thing for me. Yeah. New Orleans... Mortuary is typically our first haunt of the year because they open earliest. Right. But this year, with everything being so cattywampus, they didn't even announce they were opening until, like, 
basically days ago. Yeah. For being honest. Days before. Yeah, they, and it was their it, opening night. They they were opened this weekend. Um, but yeah. They they cuz they had they had to, like the other haunts had to fight the state orders which would have made it literally impossible for them to open cuz technically haunted houses were allowed but at such low capacity it was impossible. Um mm-hmm. so they had to get through that. But yeah, so that experience just and this is a 13th floor haunt. Yeah. This is the Biggest company in haunting as far as owning haunts, I believe. Right. Best funded. And I know these guys. I know the people that run it. They're competent and smart people. They're not idiots. Mm-hmm. And they're good people, too. And they're having all these issues? Dear God, what hope would our little home haunt have had? Yeah, I mean, at this point, just trick-or-treating it is in question for us. Yeah. Because we don't have the money that, that pro haunts have no. to make sure that people are distancing properly and our outside crew um have already told us they can't do anything this year yeah. because of covid it's too dangerous for yeah. them yeah that this the, the one positive coming out of the new orleans nightmare trip was any doubt i had about going about opening about not about canceling this year went out the window yeah um yeah and then that's just it i mean and what kills me about it, and we'll just blow through this because we're at 40. Apparently, it's going to be a long one. We're at 40 minutes. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. I remember early in this COVID thing, we as an industry really did a good job overall rallying right. and trying to fight this. Mask up, save Halloween. Everyone remembers that slogan. Right. Well, it wasn't enough. Blame the mask holes. Blame inadequate enforcement. Blame whatever. There's a very invariable reason. Some of it's just the disease itself. Yeah. Um, but... It, the, the efforts weren't enough. Halloween is not going to be the same this year. No. That doesn't give us the right to flout the laws or endanger others. Just mm-hmm. because our holiday now is being heavily impacted doesn't right. give us the right to become the maskholes, to become the endangerers. No. That's not how this works. No. And, I mean, there was a lot of talk about plans of how the industry could still open. You yeah. know, how haunts could still open safely. And it's and it just seemed, not working. And it seemed like Fear Factory in Salt Lake City, early in the process, kind of cracked the code. Everyone said that one looked safe and looked good and looked orderly. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, so they pulled it off. Maybe it's possible. Yeah. And then it gets out into the wild as haunt season kicks off, and suddenly it's like a monkey fucking a football out there. It's incredible. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. Now I wonder how well their plans worked. You know. Yeah, I wonder if we maybe got a, a rose-colored version of it. Yeah. Or maybe it was just that unique event that early in when people weren't so tired yeah. of social distancing, weren't so tired of quarantining, right. and weren't so pent up for something. Yeah. Maybe it was just it. It required more cooperation from all crowd than we can expect right. in October. Yeah, maybe. I I don't know. The other thing that aggravates me about the New Orleans Nightmare is that they've done time ticketing events before. Mm-hmm. For Christmas, for Valentine's Day, they should have known how to do this better than other people in the area, yeah. the other haunts. Because they've had experience with it. They know what happens. They know that people show up. They know they get lines. So... Why was and, this not treated differently? And that's one of the frustrations is I keep seeing people in chat saying, they're regulating us like we're not making changes in how we operate. They're shutting us down. They're limiting our capacity super tightly. Like, we're, like we aren't taking precautions. No. And the problem is, I know New Orleans Nightmare took precautions. Yeah. I know a lot of these other haunts took precautions. Those precautions fell right apart. Yeah. And we're seeing this all over the industry. Photo after photo, I'm seeing of haunt shows long lines, crushing humanity, limited mask usage, yeah. unsafe policies, actors, um, not, not socially distancing from guests. I see this over and over and over again in those groups. And people are like, they should regulate us like we're taking the precautions, like we're being responsible. But there's not evidence that, that, that the efforts to be responsible are working. Right. And some of it is, hey, this is new. We ain't figured this shit out. I get that. But this is a time where you don't really get to figure it out as you go. You, you got you, you to gotta be out of the gate on this one. 
Yeah. And and Chris Gay is, is popping in and saying, now that it's supposedly airborne and not just droplet based, I'm really not sure it's actually possible to open responsibly and safely this year. Yeah. Maybe will not be. Well, applauds the efforts, but he's also relieved that his haunt didn't open. Yeah, I, so. I agree. And here's the thing. Even if you think it's all bull, yeah. the law is the law. And if you flout the law, I'm a person who believes if you want to break the law and if you accept the consequences of it, you go right ahead. Godspeed. Have fun. Yeah. The problem is your flouting of the law doesn't just impact you. It, A, may get people sick. B, will almost certainly impact the rest of the industry. <sighs> So, yeah. Anyway, so basically what all this amounts to is we're not going to any haunts this year. No more attempts. We're done. No. We're, we're taking a hiatus from haunt visits in 2020, and it's not just a lack of certainty about doing it. It's now a lack of desire because seeing all this has just made it so that I don't want to, to be frank. Maybe next year, but it feels to me like 2020 has just taken from me not just haunting but my love for haunting, and that's what hurts. No. I, I've never felt like I was falling out of love with haunting. No, because usually the communities, you know, there are problem areas within the community that I did not realize were there before we started doing this podcast yeah. and getting to know the industry better. Yeah, getting to know um, the industry outside of our little exactly. niche. Yeah. And to see the response to COVID and to you know, everything going on in the country, it's been very disheartening. Yeah, I'd agree. The only way I would consider it is if we found a haunt that did time ticketing only mm -hmm. with no in-person or same-day sales at all. Yeah. All tickets are sold the night before the latest. Yeah. I, I just, I don't, I don't know that I would trust it. And I don't know because either. Because the marketing for New Orleans Nightmare was, this is going to be a private experience. Come and experience the haunt like you've never experienced it before. Yeah. You know, and and we get there and there's 250 people in line or more. Yeah. And I'm just not. And one of the things that, that angers me about it is we got there at 9 p.m. Yeah. Uh, we, got, exactly we got there a few minutes time. early. We got like 8.55-ish. We, we gave ourselves enough time to get through any tomfoolery on the front side. So we got there a few minutes early. There was no way, looking at the number of people in that line, we were actually entering by 9.15. No. Not a goddamn chance. No. No. So why did we show up for our especially a lot of time? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, you know, if we may have, because we get recognized there. Yeah. But anybody else with regular tickets... Interestingly... Uh, I don't know if we would have been recognized this year because of the masks. I, th I think we would have been. I really do. Eh, I don't know. I'm a little less sure. No. Because we, 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 we look very different masked up than we do without masks. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, basically, if they had time ticketing only, no queue lines, and had truly changed the interior of the hall, I might consider it. No. Yeah. But, like I said, I still got to get past the lack of desire. Right. Anyways, so try to turn this around. We got a, a, about you know ten ish more minutes. Mm -hmm. um, Want to talk about what we are doing right now? Yeah. What haunting is for us in twenty twenty, and basically we're working hard on our yard display. Yeah. Yeah, we're not being we're not able to do the one we wanted to do. No. But we adapted it, and I Very think well. it works pretty well. Yeah. Basically, we wanted to do a giant wooden structure. We had this plan. We blueprinted yeah. it out, rough sketches and things, and we went to go buy wood, and we mentioned this last week. Yeah. And the wood prices are triple, double to triple what they normally are, and we just we, we couldn't stomach that. And it also means that there's people that need the wood more than us. I don't want to take wood to build a, a yard display if somebody needs it to repair their house. You know, because we had two yeah. hurricanes in region and possibly a third. <clears throat> so basically what we did is we took the light tunnel we had previously reused the pieces to make a skeleton haunted house. Yeah. Basically, it's four rooms, three walls, the, the, the like a stage, think of it. Like yes. Yeah. And we have four scenes. Mm -hmm. The first is a witch with a skeleton and a cauldron. Right. The second is a spider room. Mm 
Mm -hmm. The third is a pirate sequence, and the fourth is a doctor sequence. And the thing I love about each of these is they have a skeleton monstrosity. Yeah. The witch has the uh, snake on the arm. Right. The skeleton snake hybrid. The spider room has probably the greatest skeleton <laughs> monstrosity made out of commercially available skeletons I've seen. Yeah. Because basically, those things break. Exactly. They break. There's nothing you can do. There's tw they're 25 bucks. They have a lifespan. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They have a lifespan. So whenever one of them breaks, we don't throw it out. We just take the, the bits and bones and whatever and put them in a bucket and come back to them. Well, yeah, because broken skeletons are always useful. If nothing else, they would be in a bone pile. But Crystal made a skeleton spider. Yeah. Basically, she took some broken feet and legs and just made this really messed up looking <laughs> spider thing. Yeah. Um, I like it. The, uh, the pirate room has another broken skeleton. We have one skeleton that lost a leg and lost a hand. Uh -huh. So guess what he became? A peg leg hook pirate. Yes. Duh. Yep. That was pitifully obvious, wasn't it? And then the, the last room, the doctor room, has my favorite joke because the, the evil skeleton doctor is slowly turning his patient into a, a human. Yeah. <laughs> we got a cheap plastic human, just an old lady mask, I think, uh -huh. and a, a realist, more realistic looking hand yeah. and put it on there. So <laughs> slowly turning the skeleton into a human. Right. So that made me laugh to do that. But yeah, we finished the structure. And ran all the lighting and the power stuff to it. And that was definitely the most complicated part, was building that structure and getting every, the skeletons in it and getting the power and lights to it. So all of it. All of that. But no, <laughs> I meant of the overall display. Yeah. That was the most complicated part. Oh, right. Yeah. Because we have more to do, as we mentioned. We yeah. have to do, um, have a lot of work ahead of us to finish it, but the landscaper is due tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah. To scalp the rest of the yard. Basically, we told him, look, just cut that shit as low as you can, and we'll see you sometime in November. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so he's going to come by and do that, and then after that, we'll start setting up. If. If. <laughs> we. Because we might have to tear down absolutely everything we already did, because we just found out today a hurricane may be coming. Currently, it's currently just an invest, but it's set to become Tropical Storm Gamma? Delta. Delta. I can't remember which one We're past I Gamma. Oh, good God. Delta, um, any day now, any minute now, from the sound of yeah, it. Yeah, Gamma's already a storm. It's still out there. <sighs> it's, but it's just it's, ahead of this one. Yeah, it's, but it's not impacting us in any way. No. But Delta uh, looks to be hitting this area as possibly a Category 2 hurricane. Yeah. That's the current prediction. And even though... You know, this structure just cannot support wind. They cannot sustain any more than regular seasonal wind. Right. We built it to take the wind we do see pretty well, and now that it's better weighed down with the skeletons that are attached to it, <clears throat> and all, all the, 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 the electrical case probably weighed down by 20 fucking pounds of electric cords <laughs> right now, too. Doesn't doesn't hurt it. So it's got all this weight on it. But yeah, we may have to tear it down. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, all of our skeleton actors are wearing masks. Oh, mask. yes. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. yeah. Every skeleton in the yard will be masked. And um, if and the, basically, if the storm is a dud or misses us... Yeah. Oh, real fast. Do you know how weird it is for us to get a hurricane in October? Yes. It's very bizarre. It is. But anyways, if the storm is a dud or misses us, we're planning on adding a skeleton queue line. Yeah. Um, socially distanced. With uh, one being turned away because they aren't wearing a mask. Yeah, the only skeleton without a mask will be getting refused service. Yeah. This haunted skeleton haunted house. Um, and also we're doing a whole bunch of pandemic jokes. We have a bunch. We found a bunch of our um, plastic feet. Yeah. And we're gonna have two skeletons standing six feet apart. Yeah. Things like that. So we got a bunch of those kinds of jokes coming. And if you're looking for a way to easily add a mask to a skeleton. Mm -hmm. I'm here to help. This is the one specific tip I think we have this episode. What you do is you get the children's masks. They sell them at Walmart, but they probably sell them at like Walgreens too. The kids' size mask. Yeah. Their heads are teeny tiny. They are. And then you take an 11-inch zip tie. You might be able to use a shorter one, but I wouldn't try it. An 11-inch one. Loop it around both of the ear connectors loosely, like one or two clicks. So now you got like a, a three-ring thing going here. And then just slide it over the skeleton's face. It'll stay. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing. It works, and they haven't moved an inch. I went out and checked them right before we went on. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> haven't been moving. So it slides yeah. right on, and it stays really good. So if you're looking to put masks on skeletons for a display, there you go. That's your solution. Yeah. 
Glad yeah. we could help. Other than, you know, just taping it on or, or gluing doing it on or something whatever, yeah. more permanent. Yeah. We didn't want to do anything super permanent. And besides, right. I think it looks better because it actually looks like it's going around their ears, too, which, you know, yeah. skeletons don't have ears. Exactly. Now, the only problem is I can't keep the skeletons with the masks on their damn noses because skeletons don't have noses either. So, mm -hmm. I tried. It, it should be a really great display if we can keep it up. We're gonna, I'm going to post photos of it on Haunt Weekly on Facebook. Mm -hmm. on our Facebook page um, during the week after we get this live. So hopefully you'll be able to see some of that. Um, yes. And I also will be um, contacting all the September winners yes. to get your information. Um, I have a something that I've been working on that's taken my time away from prizes, so I need a little extra time this month. Not to mention the yard display. Yeah, the yard. A lot of time. <laughs> Yeah, we've so. had we've had some projects going on, and there's yeah. one very special uh, gift about to go out. If I yeah. remember, if I get catching your drift well, yeah. So that should be going out soon. But once we clear that out, we have a bunch of things to send you guys that have been doing great with the question of the week. Yep. Um. Oh, and we are planning if comfortable and allowed socially distanced trick or treating. You've all seen the PVC pipe thing where yeah. the people are sending it via like like pipe. We're yeah. gonna do something like that. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. But that's the plan there, tentatively. Uh, should be a lot of fun. I, it's going to be cool, because Bernie doesn't get to do trick-or-treating. Yeah. So I'm looking forward I don't either. To, I know. We don't get to do trick-or-treating, so Bernie's going to get to do trick-or-treating. It's going to be great. Yeah. That part's going to be a lot of fun, I think. So, yeah. All in all, we're a bit depressed. We're trying to get our mojo back, but hearing all this depressing news, seeing all these images, it's just taking its toll on us. And so, I want your help. And we had a question of the week. I mm -hmm. think may provide exactly that. Was what are you doing to keep your spirits up? It looks like we've got some interesting answers. Crystal, okay. take it away. Uh, Chris Gay is watching a ton of horror movies on Shutter and Prime Video. Uh, Pete Blackwell is daydreaming a lot and going over pictures from former haunts, planned future haunts. So okay. planning for next year. Not a bad idea. Uh, Ryan Ruger is our haunt did not open, so we are using the awesome weather and time to make our haunt even better for 2021. Uh, they're also going to see 12 haunts in the Pennsylvania area. Um, and Japes is having a baby. Well, that's cheating. <laughs> yeah. That, that Japes has cheating. That's illegal. Yeah. Um, he, <laughs> that, that's, that's an illegal answer to this question. <laughs> it's got to be something I can do. <laughs> <laughs> He's also been going to home haunts, and yeah. it's a mixed bag since... Um, some of them don't think they need to take COVID precautions. Yeah, and 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 then, like I said, what ended up doing us in was in terms of the cancellation. Sorry, not home haunts, just some haunts. Some haunts. Yeah, yeah. But what ended up doing us doing in for the in terms of the cancellation was exactly the problem we're seeing mm -hmm. was we realized we can we can socially distance inside the haunt. Yeah, we can socially distance our queue line. We can set up a free time ticketing system. Right. We can do all that. But we still can't control who shows up, what kind of crowd we get, and we don't have the people, or the presence to be able to control that. Right. And that's just we realized when we realized that it was over. Yeah. So, anyways, well, thank you very much for joining us and spending this past near hour with us. I greatly appreciate it. This actually has been somewhat therapeutic. Getting this out, getting it out there, has helped me some. Maybe you know I'll be able to turn things around. Maybe we'll have to. We'll see what the hurricane does. Mm-hmm. But you have spent the past hour listening to Haunt Weekly, episode 253, The Bitch Fest. No, I mean, <laughs> the episode about Halloween and haunting in, tw in 2020. You can find more of our stuff at hauntweekly.com or Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook, youtube.com slash hauntweekly is our YouTube channel. You can also find us at Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher. Okay. Until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And we will see you guys next week. <laughs>